Hello! Welcome to my very first YouTube video. Um, basically what I'm going to be doing on my channel is sewing, making different crafts, um, maybe some knitting or crochet. Uh, basically I want this channel to be a place where I can make things that I enjoy making and kind of document the things that I make and also maybe if other people see it give them some like ideas for creativity and that's about it. Uh, so without further ado, let's begin. Um, today I'm making kind of like a summer outfit. So I, I generally kind of stick to the same things when I'm sewing. I really like dresses. I really like skirts. I have made a decent amount of them to wear. Like I feel like I'm pretty good at them. Obviously I always have more to learn, but like they're, they're things that I feel pretty comfortable with. So today I'm going a little bit outside my comfort zone and I'm going to make a set of shorts and a top matching fabric. I like always think these are so cute and I love them. I've kind of had it like in the back of my mind forever that I'd really like to make them, but I've never made a pair of shorts and I don't make like tops very often. So I'm kind of going outside my comfort zone, but I have some materials to help me. So. Let's look at my stack of prep materials here. So first of all, the most important thing, this is the fabric that I'm using. Um, I got this at a garage sale. It's just a really cute, like fun, bright color plaid. And it's cotton, so it's like a pretty nice lightweight fabric for summer. And I just thought it was so cute and it's like such a perfect, pretty summer colorful print. Um, now there are gonna be a couple places uh, specifically on the shorts for like kind of an accent color and I'm just gonna be using this like light blue um, uh, also cotton and I think I got it from the same garage sale but I thought they were pretty cute together there's not gonna be a lot of this but it's in there um, and then as far as the pattern goes uh, I'm not good at following patterns I'll just like say that right off the bat I'm just I'm not good at it so instead of strictly trying to follow patterns. I kind of just do my own thing. So I made like some drawings of what I think that I want this to kind of end up looking like. And I think, although I'm still going to do something a little different than this because I made quite a bit of drawings trying to figure out what I wanted this to look like. So that's something that I'm always like worried. What if I make this and I'm, it's really ugly? I feel like the kind of my safeguard for that is if I draw it and I think it's ugly, it's probably going to end up being ugly. And if I draw it, I still think it's really cute, it's probably going to be okay. Um, so I did draw this out last night. I like it pretty well. It's not like exactly what I'm going to be doing because I kind of like changed my mind about what I'm going to be doing. Um, but that's the plan, uh, is the drawing that I have. Um, the next thing, I do have patterns. I do keep patterns. Um, the main thing that I keep patterns for is not so much that I can like follow the patterns, but more because a lot of times when you're making pieces, it's hard to like visualize in your mind, what does this piece of fabric need to look like when I cut it out? Like, you know what the finished product looks like, but to kind of like reverse engineer it in your mind sometimes can be kind of challenging. So I do keep patterns that kind of help me understand what pieces I need to cut out. And then from there kind of been sewing long enough that I can kind of figure out the steps on my own because pattern instructions are like just they're like rocket science oh my gosh the first time I ever tried to follow a pattern on my own like because when I when I was growing up my mom did a lot of sewing that's kind of how I picked it up and she would you know like help me with patterns and stuff and explain like this is what you do next and kind of like help me through it the first time I ever tried to make something using a pattern, like, after moving out and I couldn't just be like, Hey mom, how do I do this? I think I called her like four times because I was just so confused. And they are, they're so confusing. So, you just ignore them. That's what you do. You, you learn on the fly because it's going to be easier than like learning from a pattern and just letting the pattern like make you mad basically. So, my first pattern... Uh, actually, I have two here. They're both for, like, shorts. Um, because I think I can make the top. Also, I couldn't really find in my patterns anything that really 
was the top that I wanted it to be. Most of my patterns are thrifted. Um, I think I might have like one or two that I've ever bought new. Some of them are like my mom's old patterns. A lot of them I got at like garage sales though or Goodwill always has a bunch. So I have a lot of like old patterns. Um, I have these two that they're actually different brands and from like different decades. But they both have like the same, almost the exact same shorts pattern. Like even the pattern they drew on it was pink polka dot. It's the exact same thing. Which I think is really funny. But I'm going to be going with the Butterick pattern from... 1986 so we're going back in time a little bit here but I think it's really cute and it's kind of exactly what I want so that's what we're gonna go with that the other thing that I always use as a reference point and that I highly recommend that other people do is your own clothes because if you already have a piece that you're like this fits so well look at that again how did they make that how do they put that together what kind of seams do you see in that just use that as a reference point so along the same lines of the short I have these pair of brown, just like linen shorts that I got from Old Navy. They're so comfy and cute, and I really like the fit of them. So even though I have my pattern pieces that I can kind of like follow the shape of it, I can still know exactly what size that I want because I wear these and I love them and they fit really well. And then I also have, I don't really have a tank top that's like similar to what I want, but I have this dress that I got at a thrift store that the top of it is kind of the fit that I want. So I'm really just gonna kind of look at this and uh, you know, there there's a couple seams in the front, there's a couple in the back that I'm going to pay attention to like where the lines are and how they're put together. And then that's what I'm gonna go off of to kind of see how I cut that top part out since I don't really have a good pattern that I can find for it. I have a lot of patterns that have like tops but most of them were like button down or short sleeve and the main part that like I don't know how to do is the fact that I want to make it like kind of like a, a V neckline. <sighs> but Amy looks very glamorous, right? Okay. All right. Without further ado, let's get started. Um, I haven't cut anything out or really done anything. So you're going to be with me through this whole process. Yay. So I got all the pieces cut out. Um, I'm gonna start out by just kind of sewing the top together and we're gonna see how it goes. So here we go. A little sewing tip here for you. When you're making straps for a top like this, you can use a chopstick to flip them right side out. Just make sure you use the blunt end of it and not the sharp end or else you'll rip a hole in your fabric. And you'll have to remake a strap, which I definitely didn't have to do for this video. I just finished the straps for my top and I guess I didn't really think through how they were laying quite as much as I was everything else. I don't have like a ton of experience with like plaid fabric, so you can't see that they're plaid, they just look striped, which isn't my favorite, but like wrong side has like some plaid on it and that's cute, but the seams on that side, so you're just gonna see stripes. But it's not like it won't match, but I don't love it, whatever. So if I've done everything right so far, this should be the back of my top. That's too high, but you get the point, it's kind of getting there. Um, I kind of wanted it to be like very loose fitting, so it's gonna look bigger, I think, than it should be, which is fine, because I want it to fit that way. So, so far so good, I think, hopefully. It looks good. Okay, so before I actually sew the straps on, I was putting darts in it, just so it's like a little bit more shapely in the front. And I was like, not even gonna film this part because I'm historically very bad at darts. Like I just really struggle to make them not a point um and i just need to brag on myself for a moment i'm sorry who did that who is she not pointed at all <laughs> very happy with that i gotta do the other one still but it's a win it's a win so i realized i made a mistake 
Remember how I was so proud about those darts I sewed? Mm. Still love them. Um, I realized that I should have waited to do that until after I had connected my lining and my like outer fabric because now I can't turn them inside out because they're connected by the darts. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Stand by. I'll figure it. Okay. I can still sew it, like, right sides together. I'm just gonna have to do it in, like, portions. And that's okay. I can still do it the correct way. I don't have to, I was thinking I'm gonna have to, like, flip it. Or, like, do it, do an outside stitch and, like, fold it all under and it just wouldn't look nearly as good as the rest of it. So... I can still do it. I just have to do it in like one straight line at a time, basically. We'll see how it looks. I don't know. Okay, got it all ironed. And honestly, she's starting to look like something. Look at this cutie. Like, it didn't iron out quite as nicely as I probably could have ironed the other pieces, but like, I feel like I like this even more than I thought I would. Very excited. Okay, so I'm almost done with the top. I added a little bit of elastic underneath the arms because I want it to be like a really loose fitting top but it was so loose fitting that it was kind of creating like a weird like gappy area under my arms and I also decided it would be really fun to add like a little ruffle along the bottom which I think I'm really liking and yeah I'm almost done so I'm gonna finish sewing that one and then we'll take a look at it. I'm kind of lazy when it comes to gathering. Um, Normally, what you should do is either use like the longest just straight stitch on your machine and then take it out and take the, uh, I think it's like the bottom thread, like your bobbin thread, um, and you just like pull in the ends and you gather it all up and then you pin it to your piece and then you sew across there. That's what you're normally supposed to do. I am kind of lazy and I hate wasting all the thread that you eventually have to like because you, you pull a lot out of your length of fabric and I have like a really long piece that I'm putting on here. So what I decided to do was, and this is what I kind of typically do unless I'm trying to be pretty specific about my measurements and not like waste fabric. Um, but I really just have my strip of fabric and as I'm going along, I just kind of like bunch it up underneath the foot, um, which I know is like totally really not how you're supposed to do it like it is not very particular and it doesn't really allow you to like measure what you're doing um so I wouldn't always recommend it but I know that I have enough of this fabric and I know that I like a pretty full ruffle I'm trying to do it in a way that like it still looks like it's been gathered and like I did it correctly sometimes it kind of ends up looking a little bit more like pleats but I still think that's pretty cute so really all I do is I'll like sew over the area that I was working on so I'll go forward a little bit and then I lift up my presser foot and then I just kind of you know like kind of try to evenly kind of bunch it up underneath there it's pretty similar to like if you have a, ever done gathering you know you try to space it out about as evenly as gathering would normally look and then I just hold it down on the side here and go forward a few stitches and then lift it back up and do the same thing again um, arguably, it might be just as slow as actually gathering, which is what I was trying to avoid. However, it does save a lot of thread because you don't have to waste all that extra thread that you have inside the fabric that you have to, like, kind of pull out. So, I like it for that reason. Um, and it looks like I just about estimated correctly, so that's good. And I'm gonna stop there. And then I'll iron this and we'll see what it looks like because I think I'm pretty much done. And here is the finished top. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so in love with how this fits. I just think it turned out so much cuter than I even thought it would. Um, I'll show you the completed outfit here in a minute when I get the shorts done. But so far, super happy with how it is looking. So, back to the video. So, like I mentioned earlier, 
I've never made shorts before. And almost out of principle, I like refuse to follow the directions. So I have to kind of like conceptualize how these are gonna go together because I've made tops, I've made dresses. So like the top, I felt like I kind of knew what I was doing, but this pile of pieces, I feel a little lost. So we're gonna see how it goes. I don't know, we need to like conceptualize how this is gonna come together and be a pair of shorts. I don't know. I feel like sewing is really about like order of operations. Like you gotta make sure you're putting the pieces together in the correct order so that you don't have to like draw edges out and just so it all fits together correctly. So I really feel like if you're like very good at math, you'd probably be really good at sewing because like those both have order of operations in them. I don't know, just a thought. I don't know. <sighs> I think I was just gonna jump into this. I don't know. I'm trying to look at the picture and I feel like what I'm thinking in my head is making sense. Um, let's hope so. I don't know. Um, I also, I, I haven't, I don't have a lot of experience with pockets. This has pockets in it. I absolutely want to make sure I had shorts with pockets because bottoms without pockets are just like dumb. Um, I'm worried that this pattern doesn't recommend, or it doesn't have cotton in the uh, like recommended fabrics, which I'm worried means it's not going to be like as weighty as it's supposed to be. But if I don't feel like it's like as flowy and it's too poofy, I might just like sew some like pennies or something into the, the hem to make it a little bit weightier. Maybe dimes, I'd be a little bit more subtle. Put a little money in my clothes, but I don't know, I'm just gonna jump into this. Let's see. Uh, I guess I'll start out with just like sewing kind of the crotch area because that seam kind of seem, kind of seems like it's underneath everything else. Maybe I need to sew, you know what, I'll sew the pockets together. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't know. <laughs> the further I go, the like less confident I feel in what I'm doing. So that's never a good feeling, I don't know. That's, that doesn't feel like a good sign of how things are gonna turn out. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised, but I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned. I'll say it. I'll be honest. Oh my gosh, what if I put like a cute little stitch on the edge? Oh my gosh, I've got so many little shapes. I could do something fun. Oh man, this is a big decision. So I decided I just went with the straight stitch. I'm worried like I've got a lot of bright colors and fun pastels and a really bright print. I'm worried if I make these shorts any more like cartoony, they're gonna look like an eight year old is wearing them. So I just went with a straight stitch, but I ran out of bobbin thread halfway through. So I just kind of like stabbed a bunch of holes in my fabric. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix that. I don't know who makes bobbins, but they have made me feel stupid so many times. So to like thread it, all you have to do is like start your thread in the little hole and then like on my machine you just pop it on the bobbin and you press the presser foot and it fills it all up perfect good to go should be the easiest thing in the world right so there's a little tiny hole in it that you're like okay i gotta thread it through that little tiny hole i'm too close but you see that false that's not the hole that's the hole why do they design these that there's like a little fake imprint right next to it you know how long i just spent trying to thread my fabric through that fake imprint Somebody's just, somebody's just being mean, like for no reason, at the, the bobbin factory. So I was finishing up some of the edges on my shorts with my serger. It's pretty old. It's like a hand-me-down serger and I've like never changed the thread in it. I've like threaded it one time, which was the first time that I got it. Um, so 
definitely don't have like a ton of experience with it. Um, but I was, I literally had like this much left, like this section right here. I'm too close. You can't see it, but like almost done. And I noticed that like it was getting a little wonky. See, it's like kind of like scrunched up right there. Like this is what it normally looks like. Pretty decent, not amazing, but a lot better than that. And the needle just snapped. Look in there. It like just like literally snapped off. Um, so that was kind of terrifying. It literally came back and smacked me in the face. Uh, like right on my forehead so could have been impaled I don't like that I don't know why this happened um, I'm concerned that like the tension is too tight somewhere on my machine because I'm looking at like this thread is what broke and like I can't even pull it through so I don't know what's going on there um, but yeah that uh, is not good but thanks to my husband's massive amount of tools, after like an hour of fiddling with it, I was actually able to get the machine needle fixed and I got the shorts done. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy with these guys. They turned out so cute. They're super comfy and airy. And I just think they're like such a fun summer look. I'm so excited to wear them. Um, they are really light and airy. So I think that like even a hot day, I'm gonna be comfortable. And here is the full completed outfit. I'm so happy with how this turned out. It's exactly what I was looking for in the beginning. And I'm definitely gonna be getting some wear out of this this summer. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I really enjoyed making it. So I hope to see you back here again with Hannah Does Crafts. Thanks.